Hey, welcome back to Curiosity Hub, I'm Ollie Hubbard. Which species do you think is our closest cousin? Chimpanzees? I used to think so, but I was wrong. We think the last common ancestor for humans and chimpanzees was around 8 million years ago, or 13 million years ago. I mean, it's just 5 million years. But more importantly, the branch that went off to produce chimpanzees also produced bonobos. And just last week, a study of the bonobo's muscular system by George Washington University found that bonobos have changed the least from our last common ancestor. So, in the words of Bernard Wood, a professor at the uni, bonobos are the closest thing we have to a living ancestor. That bonoblowed my mind. But the interesting part is how different these guys are from chimpanzees. Firstly, chimpanzees and humans are far more aggressive than bonobos. Bonobos do have the occasional fight, but overall they resolve everything a lot more peacefully. In fact, old bonobo males look after their offspring, as well as the offspring of other males, something that you don't really see with chimpanzees. In fact, researchers report having never witnessed a bonobo kill another bonobo. And they seem to just ease their tension through a little well, a lot of physical loving. Secondly, females seem to have a lot more respect in bonobo groups compared to chimpanzees. The groups are still led by an alpha male, but they seem to wait to see if the alpha female agrees. It's been described like the group being led by a general, but ultimately waiting on the directions of the queen. And as well as that, when the alpha male is challenged, it's his mum who comes to support him, which researchers think suggests that the position of the alpha male is because of respect for his mum. In fact, the relationship between mothers and their sons in bonobo groups seems to be one of the most important relationships in their social structure. So bonobos are kind of the ultimate mama's boys. And then physically, they're a bit smaller, leaner and darker than chimpanzees. But despite having smaller heads, they actually seem like they're more intelligent than chimps, especially when it comes to communicating with humans. The best example of this is Kunzi. He can understand 3,000 words and communicates 500 of them through a keyboard which has symbols on it called lexigrams. Compare this to a chimp called Washu. He can communicate 350 symbols through sign language, which is still pretty impressive, but nowhere near Kunzi. Kunzi can even make stone tools, cook, and not just cook basic things, he's making s'mores and omelettes and, I mean, he can cook better than me, just flat out. So why are chimpanzees and bonobos so different? Well, a leading hypothesis is by Harvard professor Richard Wrangham and it's got to do with gorillas. Now, bonobos live exclusively to the south side of the Congo River in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Chimpanzees, however, live to the north side of the river, as well as spreading across a lot of equatorial Africa. But gorillas also spread across the north side of the river. This means that the bonobos down on the south side have a lot less competition for food. This usually leads to a lot more stability and peace, allowing them a lot more time to spend in their large social groups. But then why are there only gorillas on the north side? Well, it's thought that about 2.5 million years ago, a drought swept through and the gorillas had to go to the mountains in order to find food. But you can only get to the mountains from the north side. So the south side gorillas died out, leaving the bonobos to thrive. However, a downside to the bonobo's small habitat is that it's currently being destroyed by another primate. Humans. We have literally endangered our closest cousin through war, hunting and deforestation. And it's complex because it's all being driven by poverty. But we like to call ourselves the most intelligent species. Whereas I think we could learn a lot from the peaceful bonobos. And I mean, it makes you wonder, what is intelligence? How can that 1% difference in our DNA change so much? Well. The next few videos are going to be a series on intelligence. So if you want to catch those, just subscribe and I'd love to see you there. Also, if you want to know why it's colder after sunrise, the answer's right there. 
And the first link down in the description is going to be an awesome charity that I came across while researching. I recommend just checking it out, even for the cute photos. I'll see you soon, and as always, stay curious.